Mind Crime Liberty Show with me, Swithin Dobson, and him, Tim Patton. Today we discuss what actually is education and what is it actually for? In a previous episode, uh, we looked at uh, what we think the current education system as such actually teaches and the kind of what the telos, as it were, of the current system is. But we didn't get into kind of a root what is ach- education actually is and you know what should, as it were, the telos of education be. What got me thinking? Well, there's lots of things that got me thinking about this. Um, but for one thing, uh, was listening in my younger days to lots of debates of politicians about education and how important education was. Uh, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, hang on, you, what, what you mean by education is formal schooling. That's what they meant. They, so they meant what would equivalent be K through 12 in England, you know, uh, what's called reception of the sixth form. Uh, and then and then more importantly, university. And that's what it means by education. And um, this is really what Tony Blair went in for in like the early 2000s. Education, education, education. And he wanted to get his goal was I don't think he ever achieved it, fortunately, was to get um, over 50 percent of the population of um, 18 year olds to university. Why? Because education is good. So the question is, you know, what actually is education? Um, and while schooling seems to be part of education, it seems a somewhat narrow definition for what education actually is. So then it got me thinking, you know, what actually is education? And then the question is, well, OK, you've got education, but kind of well, what's the point of education? You know, why do we educate anybody to begin with? Um, and so it got me thinking these. And so what I came up with was what I now call the five questions of education, which are firstly, what is education? Secondly, what's the purpose of education? Thirdly, what should someone actually learn? Fourthly, how do people actually learn? And then five, what institutional structures uh, should be in place to achieve the learning of the material that you should be learning? Uh, These seem to me to be the fundamental questions which were rarely, if ever, asked. So um, what is education uh, then? I've asked, you know, said, well, they haven't given a particularly good definition of what it is. How would I define education? Well, I've defined education in, in the past as um, the cultivation of the head, hands and heart. It is cultivating the intellect. It is culti- cultivating sort of what you might refer to as moral virtues and its um, cultivation of um, your physical uh, prowess, your, your physical manipulation, you know, the movement of your body, as it were. Um, that's how I have uh, defined it. Uh, and, and, and a specific point here I'd make is that um, only individuals can learn because, and as it were, only individuals act. In, each individual decides what he does uh, in a broad sense, at least the individual thinks he is free, whether he is free or not in the relevant sort of free will sense is another question. Uh, but it's certainly true that he is has control over his actions in the way that other people don't have. And so uh, by um, educating an individual, that then gives him justification or reason to change his behavior accordingly. And, you know, in a sense, um, education is a change of behavior in a, in a, in a certain sense. So I would define education very broadly as, um, as I say, cultivating the head, hands and heart. Um, And so with that definition, lots and lots and lots of things count as education. So for one thing, you listening to this counts as education. 
if any of you are listening. Um, for me, in a sense, this constitutes education because I'm cultivating my speaking skills, which are hopefully slightly better than they were when I started. Um, it includes um, it includes playing computer games. It includes walking. Um, it includes basically everything people do, because the more you do things, the better you become at them or you or your ability changes um, to do things. Um, so you might then think, you know, well, this definition is really broad. Well, that's not really very helpful. Well, that's because. Uh, and as, as it say, what, what kind of really matters, I suppose, is, is what is the purpose of education? But I'll get to that in a second. But, Tim, what do you think of my approach as defining education as broadly as I do? Uh, do you think that's an appropriate way of doing things or do you think a more narrow definition would be uh, a better way of approaching this uh, subject? Sure. A, a broad definition is fine. Everything you do um, is education. I don't have any quibbles with that. Um, um, education, as you point out, is the Blairite definition is that, you know, formal education, university education, um, you know, in, in the United States, George Bush, of all people, had the um, common core and uh, no child left behind. And it was somewhat from the neocon right that you got a lot of these sort of education mandates here in the United States recently. Um, but, yeah, I, I would agree generally that it's broadly um, uh, a fairly broad definition is warranted. Swithin? Yeah, great. So, um. On to then, uh, what's the purpose of education? And this is a highly controversial subject, which is why I think it is rarely discussed explicitly. Because um, if you talk to the government, they'll, they'll basically say, they'll basically imply somehow education is neutral. And that, um, you know, we just learn things for the sake of learning them. And actually the overall structure is, 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 is kind of neutral because uh, not a, not attempting neutrality is somehow ideology and indoctrination. That might be a, a, a response to somebody uh, someone might have if I uh, asked, if, if, if I posed this um, a, a question. Um, so what is it uh, for? I mean, it, then, it, well, it depends who you ask, I suppose you could say. Ultimately, this is why education is so controversial in a sense. It, it kind of uh, depends on your overall view of, of the world and what you might consider a good life to be. If you're somebody who thought that uh, the material world is bad and um, what you should really do is to uh, commune with the spirit world, well, then, of course, what you think the purpose of education is going to be is different from a uh, reductive materialist who thinks only the material exists and what you should really do is to uh, acquire as much material resources as you can because well that's all there is to it so this is clearly a very large and um controversial area i don't seek to answer the, the broadest uh, part of that quite at present uh, my goal here is, so I think, somewhat slightly more modest. Um, whether you think this is uh, uh, these are appropriate is another question. But for most people, I think that you can broadly um, characterize four things that people need to have a uh, flourishing um, life or a broadly good life. And um, I would uh, uh, say that there, there are these following four things. Firstly, sufficient wealth. If you don't have any, ex if you can't appropriate sufficient external resources, you're not going to live very well. If you're in a cave and you have no food or, or you're at the bottom of a well, you're not going to have a particularly um, flourishing life. Um, I think that's that, that, that's pretty obviously true. I mean, the Stoics might disagree, but, you know, I, I think that's a, a reasonable uh, thing to say. Secondly, um, it seems obvious if you look at people that what people are built to do is to work in a certain sense. Um, even if this is something I posted in my duties in the past, uh, if you were to become like a multi multi millionaire, what would you do with your time? Uh, and I mean, there's only so many games you can play and places you can go and sort of like what you might refer to as consumptive activities uh, that you can do. Um, 
people want to produce in a certain way. And so I think that's uh, I think that's true if you see reality, uh, if you look at reality. And so what you want to do for a flourishing life, you want to do something you find meaningful. Uh, so uh, an example of this, actually, in, in the past, it was an 80 year old man um, who was really bored. I, I think he was a widower and he placed his following adverts in a local newspaper uh, near me. And it said the following senior citizen, 89, seeks employment in painting area, 20 hours plus per week, still able to clean, light gardening, DIY and anything. I have references, old soldier, airborne forces save me from dying of boredom so people want to do something because i, I think that kind of gives them a sense of um of, of, of self-worth of a set in a sense so you want to be able to have meaningful work so your education needs to be orientated to help people uh, have meaningful work uh, thirdly people don't exist in isolation uh, as aristotle would point out man is a uh, is a social animal and um, that's obvious from the way uh, that uh, ch- kind of children turn into adults. They have parents. They they are dependent. They can't be left alone to very, uh, fend for themselves in the way that sort of other animals can easily. I think I think it's uh, like a deer can walk basically when they're born. Like uh, human children take what ten eleven months to do that, and then they can't feed themselves, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So. You need community. Very few people are going to want to live entirely in a cave on their own. And so the education that they are furnished with is going to want them to be able to sit well within a community. And related to community as well, uh, most people are going to end up being married at some point. Now, uh, obviously, marriage numbers are going down. But if you take it just a definition of uh, you basically live with your like um your girlfriend or boyfriend in a separate dwelling from a, 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 a separate household then that would historically basically be called like common law marriage uh and over 80 percent of people at some point in their life in the us or the uk uh, are married at some point so you kind of think that you want to be sort of marriage marriageable as it were i mean ov- there's obvious problems with certain uh, people you may refer to as incels who are somewhat asocial uh, uh, probably due to their inceldom um, so uh, being marriageable is probably something that most people would want to be so I and then of course marriage of course is very important for creating children and then of course you know starting the uh, the whole uh, ball rolling again as it were so those are the four things I think you would build around uh, any sort of purpose of uh, education that would be sufficient wealth meaningful work uh community and uh, marriage tim do you think i've missed anything or uh any comments on which one do you think are more important than others or um any comments of anything i've said so far i would say that your four uh, purposes of of you know flourishing life is is largely correct that education should provide those um um Sufficient wealth, meaningful work, community, and marriage and family. I would say those those are all four things. I would say to some extent the existing education system, the state education system, doesn't really provide people with at minimum two. It would probably um, um, provide some people with some amount of meaningful work, um, but it doesn't really provide people with sufficient wealth that anything indebts them. Um, and in, in the future here in the United States, you have to be, you're stuck paying property taxes um, um, to pay for the education system, um, for the wonderful privilege of having to go to the education system. Um, uh, uh, and again, same way with community, you know, it, uh, do public schools provide community? For some people, they clearly do provide community. Um, um, y- you know, there's a sort of two-tiered uh, education, you know, two and a half maybe, because some people enjoy school, do very well, and get jobs that they at least don't hate out of it. Um, plenty of people... Um, the system does get through plenty of people, in particular girls, do quite well um, in the education, the existing education system. Um, um, and actually, I think a while back, the Cato Institute had a, a study that came out that women between the ages of like 22 and 28 out earn men. Um, there's actually a pay gap the other way, um, which I think is directly related to the fact that they get um, the education system probably helps them 
um, 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 it, or harms them less than boys. So yeah, I would say that the existing education system fails, uh, whether or not homeschooling or all private schooling or charter schooling or de-schooling would work to change this is is again of some question. Um, uh, the the question of you know what would the ideal uh, what would the ideal society look like is of some of some question and and um, like a lot of thinkers I you know I. I'm I, I am admittedly when it comes to education long on criticism short on solutions. Um, I do think homeschooling would would probably be an improvement for many people, although that's complicated. I don't I don't think everyone wants to do it. I don't think everyone would be very good at it. Uh, and I, I and I do think there is some lacking of of a variety of ex exposures which you can't. I'm I'm well aware there's plenty of people who do quite well with it and so forth. Um, um, it's, uh, but but nonetheless, I would say I'm long on criticism, short on short on um, on solutions. Um, but I don't. I, I would say that you know spending less time in the formal education system would probably be a, a starting point, and more time with play, less time with homework, or more time with activities. Um, you know, I think I think actually one of the things ironically that, that is quite good is the sporting system. Um, I know people like Peter Hitchens and. Um, Paul Gottfried, as well as some people in the left, would criticize, you know, the the the, the emphasis on sports in in schools. Um, but I would actually, you know, and actually this is one of the funny things that Brian Kaplan points out in his critique of education. Um, you know, um, it could be that for certain groups, uh, making the NBA has a better payoff than becoming something else. Um, 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 I mean, Brian Kaplan has stated that buying $100,000 in lottery tickets might be a better investment than um, buying $100,000 in some private education. Um, that that would be a uh, to me a very good. I mean, buying $100,000 Bitcoin would be a lot better investment circa 2012 or circa 2013 um, than a lot of things um, than than buying some. Tuition, if it's more really about acquiring material resources. I mean, one of the criticisms of Trump, for example, is that he he that if he put in money in a mutual fund, he'd actually lost money. That he got the million dollars from his father. Well, I mean, if you put money, you know, does education have a payoff based on how much it costs? It's unclear. It's unclear. And I think another example is brought in here regarding education is, is Nassim Taleb is to me has one of my favorite parables. It's called lecturing birds how to fly. Uh, um, um, things like one of the things it didn't seem to love, you know, imagine a lecture hall and they brought someone brought in eggs with some adult birds in there. You know, let's say let's say eagles um, and we put this, some lectures in there and they were going to teach them. They're going to you know, have a lecture in front of the room. They're going to teach these these eggs and these bird, the adult birds how to fly. They're going to have like aviation lectures. And lo and behold, in two weeks, all the eagles learned to fly. Now, did the did the lecturers in front of the room learn how or did they just naturally learn how to fly? I mean, in this case, is a point to be a joke, but the the, uh, the eagles learned how to fly miraculously. I think language is acquired this way to a large extent. It's quite mysterious. I mean, I mean, they have the, the example of Jeannie, the feral child, um, and um, she did not really pick up any language. She was basically locked in her basement. I mean, this is this is the social worker's favorite example of like what evil parents can do if left alone. Um, um, I mean, this is a social worker's favorite test case. Um, but nonetheless, I, you, you know, you know, it's also working out. Plenty of people get in-school suspension, which is basically, you know, stuck in a room all day. Um, so there's a lot of horror stories that go on about education. But I think, I think there's a lot of things that are just learned as you exist, as you stated in your very opening um, comment, that people just sort of naturally acquire skills. Um, you know, you can, you can sort of. That, that's how we learn to talk. Um, reading is a little more complicated, but again, watching other people read, being read to, and so forth, um, um, that that seems to be the general thrust of how people learn to read. Um, um, and as far as the other uh, other subjects, ideal that get more the ideology and you know what exactly you're doing, um, th this becomes much more tricky. And I and I do think I do think at some extent, outside of the household, education is very important in the sense that not just to acquire degrees. Um, um, that that's that seems to be the purpose of most education, just acquire a piece of paper, as Brian Clapman says, that says you're worth something. But I do think, as far as exposure, that that's that's great, and that's actually the historical purpose of universities, you know, is, is sort of a center.
for people to discuss things um, and so forth and to store knowledge. You know, the library was probably the more most important part. So I, I've rambled a little bit. Swithin, any comments? Oh, I, I think your comment about um, Brian Kaplan saying having the, the sports team uh, uh, having the MBA program might actually be a better use of their time than being stuck in the classroom. I would agree with entirely. Um, the one of the now this is back to critique. Um, the prob one of the main problems with the current education system is that, in a sense, at least ostensibly, it treats everybody as if they're little academics, which they aren't. Most people do not have that disposition. And it, it's not surprising that since universities let in more people without that disposition, uh, that they've changed from sort of uh, I, um, places of ideas to places of producing paper. Uh, I do think that's uh, in, entirely the case. So this gets into sort of my, my, my third question here, which is, you know, what should anybody actually learn? And I mean, well, it seems pretty clear that all you really need a basic level of what you need to function in society is to be able to read, write and have basic computer skills. And if you have that, you can you, know, you can get on. So the question uh, thereafter is, you know, well, what should anybody actually learn? Well, it's kind of not obvious what you should learn. Uh, I would argue that um, if you want people to have meaningful work, in their future, then you want to give them some level of autonomy over what they learn. So they can set their own goals, they can decide what they want to do, and then you do things that they think are meaningful. Now you might say, ah, well, you know, what if they decide on play games all the time? Well, there's value in that. Um, but I mean, it doesn't mean you don't put any limits on it at all. Uh, but the point rather is that um, if you allow people to try things out and they they can learn that uh, they, they, they can do things that they find of interest. And if they decide they don't find it of interest anymore, they'll do something else. Um, and until they can stumble across, you know, those those things that they think are going to be of value to them. Because, you know, it, you're not going to get anybody to have meaningful work unless they can figure they genuinely think what they're doing has value. Now, this does not mean that everyone has to find their dream job. They just need to find something that isn't terrible. Uh, you know, I mean, so, for example, uh, one of my children, uh, he is very mechanically minded. He's always unplugging and plugging things in. Now, he could well end up being something like an electrician or a plumber or something like that. That seems to suit his disposition. He might change. Now, is he really going to enjoy every minute of being a plumber? No, of course he's not. But is it something that he can find value in and he doesn't hate? Yeah. And considering you spend most of your time working, why do you want to do something you hate for like 70 percent of your um, of your um, conscious hours? I mean, that would seem to be uh, bizarre. Now, the question is, you know, so what do you learn? I mean, I say learn what you're interested in. Um, and this is one of the issues with lots of like health and safety regulations and um child labor laws etc if kids want to actually go out into the workplace and see how workplaces operate it's basically impossible because um the way the courts uh, deal with insurance claims etc um basically children uh, cannot get anywhere near uh, those sorts of areas these days and then also anything to do with kids these days requires like reams and reams of paperwork because in England we now have safeguarding which basically arose because social services were inept and a child died which meant that people who weren't in social services now have to do way more than they used to because social services cocked up and so as you said out you did know, these different sort of um, um, experiences that people can have uh, of children exposed to is actually they can't actually have um, because it, they're basically legally prohibited from doing so. Um, so ideally, you'd be able to to have no child labour laws, etc. And you know, children could be in loads of different areas and actually learn things they find of interest. And this is something Jeffrey Tucker is good at. You know, he says like boys of like young teens, you know, they want to see how things work. You know go and work in a factory for a bit you know see what it's like 
you know, you can earn some money, you can be productive and you're going to be learning skills that actually the job market finds useful um, rather than just doing stuff on a piece of paper. Um, so I would say what you should learn is primarily beyond those basic things is going to be um, largely up to the individual in question. I would though add though, uh, for any particular community, uh, the teaching of kind of history um, and sort of engaging in uh, historical cultural activities of, of festivals like Christmas and Easter, etc., are very good for sort of rooting uh, one's personality in a particular group and historical uh, place. Um, I think one problem, sort of psychologically, as it were, of many people today, especially who live in cities away from their families, etc., is they're kind of rootless and don't have. Um, a, a great sense of belonging and I think sort of learning what people did historically or if, if your sort of people group and things did roots you more than just being part of a family it gives you a sense of belonging over time uh, more than you would otherwise would have but um, so yeah so as to what you should learn I basically say just uh, you know basic reading writing maths computer skills and beyond that it's largely open and i would also say or should go into the next point uh is that you can kind of learn those read writing and maths without just being sat down and taught them you kind of pick them up as tim you're saying like reading etc uh so tim i've rambled a little bit on uh, what you should learn if you've got anything in particular i think i've missed that you i think that people should learn or um any parts of that you want to emphasize or de-emphasize in general, I, I, I agree with you. I, I don't really have too much to add here. Um, no, that that's that's that that's great. Fine. OK, so I'll go on to the fourth question. So how would you learn? Now, this is um, I think this actually informs to a large extent what I've said earlier, although not entirely. I think most people realize uh, the subjects that they know the most about uh are the ones they have an intrinsic interest in so you go to somebody who is, who is an uh and you talk to them and you realize they know absolutely loads about the nfl or they know about uh football proper football like soccer yeah proper football um and why don't they know loads about it well because they like it because it's just the case that if you like something you'll learn about it so for example um, I'm reading quite a lot on architecture at the moment. I didn't used to be particularly interested in architecture. If you'd sat me down and made me learn various periods in architectural history and the changing styles, would I have learned very much? No, I wouldn't. Why? Because I didn't have any interest in doing so. Um, so to relate to that, so my knowledge of economics, so I've got an economics degree, uh, did it at various different stages before then. Did I learn most of what I know about economics from my degree? No. I learned most of my stuff I know about economics from reading books I thought were interesting, such as Man, Economy, State, uh, the Quarterly Journal of Austrian Economics, Human Action, etc. That's where I learned economics from. You know, I, I didn't learn it because of, because of the syllabus and this is what I had to be taught. Uh, and uh, and um, now you might say, oh, yes, but that's different you because you, you, you're one of these strange nerdy types who has got an academic disposition. And I would agree, I am a nerdy type and there aren't that many of us around. However, at my school, uh, my brother used to work at, there was a guy who basically couldn't read. And he was like 15 and he basically couldn't read very well at all. Uh, but then he decided that he liked art and he was in the art room. And he was like, well, what does that say on the wall? Because it was pertaining to art. And so they told him. And then lo and behold, he could read. Why? Because he saw some purpose in reading it. This is what I think one of the big problems is with um, with a lot of education is you don't sufficiently take into account the motivation of the people learning. Because if you can uh, marry it up with what they find of value, they're going to learn more. And you can learn loads of things um, from um, that you wouldn't think you would learn from, say, as I say, you know, doing art, you learn to read. Oh, you necessarily thought that. Um, also interesting, like computer games is a good example. Um, you can actually learn lots of history from them because you'll have um, 
like strategy games set in historical time periods and you know lo and behold you know quite a lot about the 17th 16th or 17th centuries uh which you can then take on further into quote-unquote more academic study um so uh, i think you learn well what you uh, you know and also uh, you learn best when you have the the goal uh, that you attempt to achieve is as immediate and as obvious as possible so if you're sort of like doing some practical work you want to sort of like be able to cut a straight piece of wood for example let's say you're, you want to do that because you want to make something well you know do that you know test it and go okay that's the goal don't get them to sit down and read about how to do it it's like no, just, just just go and do it um this is my problem i have with formal schooling is it all every, it just turns everything into theory when what people care about is actually just doing it and the goal that the the system gives is not the one which is in the mind of the individual who is undertaking the sort of way the education as it were um so yeah I, how people learn i think they they learn when they're motivated to learn and they're motivated either intrinsically or by uh goals that other people have set for them which they know that's are clear and they can achieve um and that's basically how you get people to learn well tim any comments i i think one of the problems for all critical dispositions um and i think in this regard we're both in the critical disposition is the problem i would call it deem it burkean progressivism um, um and by burkean progressives i mean edmund burke says that you know what's going to replace the french what's going to replace the monarchy a napoleonic a Napoleonic super state that's even worse. That's what's going to replace it. Um, so, but 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 I mean by Burkean progressivism is also is that uh, I've oftentimes thought about this myself. You know, if, if I if I ever have children, would they go to public schools? And I think you know Thaddeus Russell had this problem too. Um, you know, he sent his kids to public schools, and the reason why is just that because it, it's kind of a Burkean progressive institution. Um, you know, public schools have existed now for a hundred years. They've existed a long time. Um, so so unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, what people have always done now is public school. Oh, I think this is why people like the Bush administration, the Blair administration are fairly pro public schooling in this regard. Um, 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 they might want to fund it through charter schools, which is a slightly different model, which is more to do attack the, the financing, but not change anything internally to it. Um, um, so I, so I, I do think there's this. There, there's this problem, and I, I would in general agree with much of what you said, ideally, 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 but unfortunately, we, we don't live in the ideal world. Um, um, we don't live in the ideal world. Uh, you know, I think it's very rational for the individual to actually go to college. Well, I think it's rational, if, depending on what you can, how much it costs you personally. Uh, if the state's going to hand out you money uh, to go to, uh, you know, and, and you, you, you at least enjoy drinking and um uh, or certain forms of socializing a lot of formal education is rational for certain individuals and certain groups of individuals to go um um, um and so forth so so i i mean you, you do sort of have to survive in some sense um uh, in a non-ideal world and one of the non-ideal parts of the world is of course the education system um um yeah it does turn everything into a theory it does a lot of 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 you know the purpose is testing and the purpose is purpose of that i i totally i totally agree with that um but i i uh, um and I, i'm going to bring up my other comment i made before in this regard i'm an ancient greek in, in the sense that i generally this is one of the ways in which i'm 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 you know, my my tilly, although I'm agnostic, my my general disposition is I generally agree with almost everything the Calvinists said when it comes to Christianity. And one of the things the Calvinists will say is that man is cursed and man hates to work. It actually, you know, it's it's a form of punishment. Um, so I generally think work is a kind of drudgery of an experience. I, I mean, I don't enjoy working myself. So I think meaningful work at times is a is a sort of Arminian contradiction. Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's I think it's work is a sort of um, if you take, you know, if you go take the evolutionary framework seriously, um, as well, uh, if you take the evolutionary framework as seriously, we, we, we exist in sort of Malthusian hellhole of an environment where, where we have asteroids, volcanoes, and all these things 
um, or just these cells that happen to develop some form of reasoning and and so forth. Um, um, so yeah, even even that regard, and even and even sexual reproduction is just a form of you know multiple we're like multiplying viruses in that regard. Um, that we're like multiplying we have these things we perceive to be as souls. So if you take the evolutionary framework or you take the sort of Calvinistic framework, it's sort of punishment. Um, that's sort of punishment. Um, then I, I, I would say that, you know, all work sucks. And he said, but, um, but, um, you know, finding a job that's not terrible is a very good, is a very good useful skill. And I said, again, I would say the, f the formal education system fails at finding many people jobs or at least not terrible works. And it tends to go for the pie in the high, the sky solutions. Um, and back to regulation and licensing and those things, you know, again, this is sort of like the problem. We're stuck with it. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're in a way stuck with it. So this this goes back to, you know, should you go to the formal education? I think it's rational for the individual in the same way. It's rational to day trade stocks um, if you think you can beat the market or beat the 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 hedge funds people. Um, some, you know, and I think it's rational to do all sorts of things. Um, whether or not some Marxist theory says that trade, short trading is a form of exploitation, who knows? I mean, I mean, who knows? Um, who knows? I mean, I mean, one of the criticisms, for example, of Stefan Kinsella that was made by a Randian was that, you know, you know, that you, well, actually Stefan Kinsella is actually critiquing the institution that actually, in a way, pays his it, it makes his salary. He's actually against the state in some ways. Um, but that that but, uh, you know, it is it is rational to play the game to some extent. Um, as an individual in, in your short-term material interest. But I would say that all all work in a way sucks. Um, 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 but, th but that but that goes, you know, you asked me, like, what is the purpose of education? I mean, well, I mean, I think the other question would have to be, and this is, again, one of the reasons I don't like the, the this is one of the reasons I like, I'm attracted to Calvinists. They're very explicit about it. Um, 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 I mean, I would say the other uh, what is the purpose of life? Uh, you know, what is the purpose of having more life? You know, because that that's that's another thing that I've you know somewhat times think about myself. As it, you know, if you can answer those questions, you can easily answer the education questions without without hesitation, um, without without any hesitation. Um, but I don't I don't you know you know you know why 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 do you want to go out and make money you know why do you want to have more children why do you want to have all these questions um i don't think the formal education system has it but i would say there's this sort of creeping burkean and progressive that exists um you know that 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 the education system just continues on the same way the french monarchy continues on um it's just going to continue on because people don't have a foreseeable alternative and now i do think i do think we want to carve out as much niches away and we're we're gonna get rid of as many runaways as we can, um, and and you know make fun of it, but I do think it's gonna somewhat exist uh, for better or for worse. But I made some rambling comments with them. I mean, uh, I, I, I what you have said is ideally all you uh, you said is I entirely agree with. Uh, ideally, 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 but unfortunately we don't always live in an ideal world. So Swithin. Yeah. OK, so just to clarify uh, sort of the ideal state, I think the ideal uh, state is a great mix of different areas. So I would expect probably that uh, education would start in the home. Well, it, it already does, actually, but for a longer period than it does. Um, a lot of the basic stuff parents can do themselves, even though very intelligent, if you're in a literate society, with media around, you, you can pick up reading and, um, and math things relatively straightforwardly. Um, and then, you know, there would be multiple groups and sessions on different topics, different areas that people might want to take online or in person. So you wouldn't necessarily need to go to a school to do a whole curriculum. You could go just for one thing, like one subject that you liked and you, the parents thought was worthwhile paying for you to do. Um, there'd be things like, in the abolition in the absence of child labor laws you know the kid might decide you know what well i'll go and make something to sell you know just go around because you know people like buying food from kids go around and make some money why not do that you'll learn a lot of stuff doing that you know uh um, yeah, cash flow uh buying things making people people want um you know you could do more sports maybe um you could become an apprentice 
uh, and you know, always myriad of different things. I, I think I don't think there's one single institution that you need to teach you everything. Um, I do think, though, that having a you know a stable family environment is probably the base of most of it. And obviously, the kids who do badly out of life in general, and which is illustrated in uh, the uh, the schooling system, is because they got a bad upbringing that there may be uh, parents are divorced or dad was never around etc etc so you kind of need that so but the, the question is we're stuck with the system we've got what can we do uh in the current uh arrangements um one idea uh, this is a macro policy rather than the micro one we'll get to that if what we can do individually in a second I've always, well, not for always thought, but I thought uh, one way to sort of really shake up uh, the education system uh, would basically be to, well, I guess it's sound incredibly radical and it might not get off the ground, but I think it might. What you do is this. You uh, denationalize the entirety of the um, education system. You give shares to local residents in schools and you sell them off. But then they go, oh, no, you've privatized it. Oh, all these poor kids are going to be stuck indoors all day doing nothing. They won't be able to do anything. And then what you do is you give the money that you would have spent on schooling to the parents directly in cold, hard cash. And then they can spend it on whatever they want. Ostensibly, this is for education. And so this would then uh, free up the supply side to provide things that parents might actually want their kids to do. At the same time here, you abolish child labor laws, etc., so that, you know, kids can actually work and do more things. You then you say you don't need child labor laws. Well, why? Because uh, for one thing, n- no parent is going to have to get the kid to work to re- earn money to keep it survive because we're already subsidizing them. By, so in the case of the UK, that'd be like five grand a year, five thousand pounds. So in American terms, we probably spend on average seven or eight thousand dollars per child per year and so you subsidize the parents directly in cash you don't give them vouchers vouchers are a bad idea because all they do is increase the cost of education and also you have a big regulatory apparatus as well uh, because what's a school oh well we have to legally define what a school is oh how are you keeping up the standards of what a school is and so you have all the government inspectorates etc um, you limit the amount you give you subsidize parents to two kids Otherwise, it just gives you a cash cow to produce more children to be paid uh, to, to produce. So you get paid more from the state. Obviously, children that currently exist, you could fund all of them um, because that obviously wasn't influenced by uh, this policy. So that'd be the macro policy. I, would suggest. I think vouchers are a, a misguided policy change. The question is, what can you do individually? As you point out, Tim, it could be rational for people to go in the formal education system, and some people do very well out of it. Uh, I would say um, if you want to go into medicine or you want to go into engineering, you pretty much have to go through the education system. Um, Maybe not. um, You still have to get a degree. That's true. And whether you can get a degree without doing the formal stuff beforehand, that's another question. But you certainly need a degree in medicine and engineering to do anything there. Those are probably the two major ones that you definitely really need to do. And, you know, people do relatively well out of them because you can get those and that's marketable. Uh, So what else do you do? Um, I would argue in most cases that uh, home education is probably one of the best options you can go for. Um, it's becoming increasingly easier to do it because of the Internet. You can get loads of resources. Otherwise, it'd be very difficult to get hold of. As you pointed out, historically, Tim, one of the main places of the uh, university would have been the library. I mean, you have a library in your pocket now. You can access all this stuff. Otherwise, it would be difficult to get hold of. Uh, also, with the Internet, you can meet other people. Uh, and so that social aspect, which a lot of people said, oh, you'd be stuck indoors all the time, actually can actually take place. You can see more people and also the more people who do it, the easier it becomes to do. Now, obviously, this is going to depend on where you live. If you're in an area where nobody does it, then, of course, you know, it would be a big, bold step to take. And that's not necessarily something I would always advocate in all situations. But um, it is relatively easy to do. Also, even if you're not that bright. um Well, if you're not that bright, the probability of your kids being massively bright 
is probably relatively low. Um, so the level difference that you rec- that, that's needed uh, to kind of teach them isn't going to be as high as you probably think they are. Oh, and also, if you look at government exams in the UK, the GCSE, which is done at age 16, if you look at what you need to learn, it's really easy. Now, I might say that because, you know, I'm a nerd. OK, fine. But it isn't really that hard if you exclude maths and uh, foreign languages. Most people could pick it up and, and do it OK. I was talking to one guy, his son, was no, was he a fireman? And he had to learn, he had to do something like GCSE. This is a qualification at 16, a standardized qualification at 16, typically, uh, in like law. And he said, like, he basically learned the whole thing in four hours. This guy, you know, he's reasonably bright, but he's not like IQ of 150. Just because, you know, it isn't that difficult. Um, so I would suggest home education. Now, obviously, home education isn't always possible financially, um, but it's cheaper than private schools. And actually, a lot of private schools are basically public schools with a swimming pool. Now, that's not to deny the importance of the swimming pool. Lots of sport related activities are very useful and you learn a lot from them. I had a tutee who was uh, actually went to Eton and he loved Eton boarding school uh, and mainly because he did loads of stuff that wasn't um formal education he did loads of trips he was in the did music so he went to like the caribbean he went to spain he did loads of stuff he learned loads of different things to do i mean actually that's what happened with me i was in our school choir and we toured france and the usa and you see different people meet different cultures you learn lots of things uh doing that and that's kind of what were the best thing about it was oh yeah and also i was in the rugby team as well um and you learn things uh, that way. Um, but I would say as on an individual level, public school or comprehensive school is probably your your last choice, I would say. Some private schools, but I'd say most of them, unless it's you're in it knowingly for the sports program, they're probably not worth the money in most cases. Uh, and home education, I would say, is probably your best option on the basis that that you'll be able to give you you'll be able to give more individualized education and the stuff we were saying before about uh um motivation intrinsic motivation and going on the child's interests etc is something you can do uh, in home education which you can't do in private schools unless you go to some of the rare like democratic free schools like Sudbury Valley in the US or the Summerhill in Kent uh what I might refer to as more ideological schools um so uh, I would counsel against uh, what um, that is Russell did. That said, I don't know his individual circumstances. It may have made sense. Uh, but I think, especially with the coronavirus stuff, more people are doing home, ed- home education more. I'm going to say, when it becomes a critical mass, it then becomes a lot easier to do. Tim, any comments on my rambles? Oh, I'm I'm an abolitionist in 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 the sense, but I, I think it's highly likely that a sharecropping system will quickly reemerge for better or for worse. Uh, I mean, this goes back to sort of me to me nature of of man questions. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I do this. You know, someone was recently critiquing Rod Dreher of all people, um, and um, he, they were calling him an alarmism, and you know, he said, well, understanding what what Rod Dreher went through, um, it, it's kind of it's kind of acceptable that he's a, an alarmist in that regard. And, and in some ways, I have similar circumstances why I read, um, do this podcast and learn. Um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say the formal education system is some emancipatory, liberating thing. I wouldn't say college is of anything. This is more emancipatory or liberating to do as form as education. Um, you know, I think listening to, you know, R.C. Sproul or Dallas Willard or or the or the um, the, the uh, Jacobin boys. Um, like Michael Brooks, um, you know, a left winger, um, is much more interesting than formal education. But but would I have gotten this without being stuck in the system? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, is there an, an ideal way to start out? Um, is, there, is there some ideal way to start out? Well, I guess the answer to this question might be some sort of Augustian theodicy almost answer. I mean, do we need the sort of draconian system um, to escape from, to know that we were stuck in some sort of cave? I don't know. I don't know if we can build... I don't know if we could build the, you know, the the, the ideal education system. Um, um, that that to me remains that managed to be 
it remains to be a question. Um, uh, um, and I stated on the ep- uh, unreleased yet to be, soon to be released episode is that I do think I do think the the, the category of twelve to eighteen year olds is a is a modern invention for better or worse. But we're stuck in the modern world. We can't go back. We can't go back. Um, um, so you know, you know, so in some way the law exists as such. So you know, as individuals, we're stuck in 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 certain situations where we're you know stuck with jobs requiring you know degrees you know if you want to become an airline pilot you need a four-year degree why need a four-year degree no one really tells you but unless you can convince a bunch of people to change it that's not going to get changed so so you know lots of you know uh, um you know unless employers start selecting you know not for four-year degrees i mean actually one solution to me is say that you know if, if the government really wants to be progressive and help out like for example the black community just make jobs like mailman's you make jobs that make jobs that if you have a four year degree, you're ineligible for. So, so say if you take state money to get a four year degree, let's say you know you take a university program, become, I don't know, a, a, a gender studies professor. And then, and then, well, then, and then it turns out you can't get a job. There's all these sorts of jobs you can't do now because you took money from the government. That would be a solution, I think, that would make society. But again, that's a very social engineering type solution. That's sort of like a Milton Friedman style solution. And we're not minarchists here. We're anarchists, anarchist libertarians. Um, uh, I'm not. I have no intention of, of of protesting or or passing a bill to do that. That's not. That's not my intention. Um, but I, you know, you know, I would say we're stuck in the existing environment. Um, um, you know, again, I, I I've stated it very clear. I'm a long on criticism, short on solutions. Um, I, I do think I do think home education. Is a great option, but I think that's somewhat the free spirited option, as as um um as as Mr. Nietzsche himself would say. And uh uh you know it's not it's not clear that everyone is a free spirit, and there are certain jobs that need to be done. And interestingly, Noam Chomsky, and this this relates back to broader issues. Um, interestingly, Noam Chomsky, you know, I want to ask him, you know, who would take the garbage out in in this sort of anarcho syndical society? And he said, well, you know, some people enjoy doing that. Um, now, it is true. I do think some people enjoy doing that. Um, um, but, it, it, you know, it's not clear. Would they do it voluntarily? I don't know. And he said, well, if, what if no one wants to do it? Well, we have to – if the job needs to be on, we have to force people on threat of starvation to do it. Uh, uh, um, um, so, you know, I do I do think, you know, if you sent 12-year-olds to factories, it might have a scared straight type experience. I mean, if you sent them to the Foxconn factory, I think they would have a scared straight. And that's actually one of the purposes of education, at least in the middle classes in my cohort, is to keep you out of the lower classes. It's a very classist example. Um, don't don't tell that to the Bernie Sanders board. But this is, again, one of the problems of education for all. Um, education for all won't bring won't raise everyone. It won't it won't eliminate the crappy, you know, jobs because um, unless they can actually be eliminated, um, unless they can actually be eliminated. I mean, if Chernobyl happens, someone needs to mine the the thing underneath the factory. Who's going to do that? We're going to call the the people in. You know, someone needs to pick the some we need helicopter pilots to fly over the roof. Um, these are crappy jobs um, that no. These are dirty jobs that no one wants to do. Um, so you know, I don't think we can extrapolate that the other jobs. I mean, someone needs to stock the shelves at Walmart. Someone needs to, you know, deliver all the packages and so forth. Uh, I mean. I mean, and one of the funny things about education is education to me, to a lot of people, is just an insurance policy um, not to be poor. It's actually a fairly good insurance policy not to be poor. That's just what Moldbug would say. Curtis Gaughan said recently in a two-hour uh, great interview. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm all for home education. I'm not I'm not against it all. I'm all for people going to private schools, I think, uh, and, and so forth. Um, I want to abolish the state's monopoly. Um, but I don't I don't have a solution to um, I don't have some clear plan. And I think this is where this is where planning is a problem. Um, you know, I, I think I think the state the state tries to make plans for people, but they, they, they fail miserably. They fail miserably. Um, you know, arguably and this is someone Thomas Sowell would point out, like, you know, certain poor white groups and poor black groups were better off in the 1950s. Now, of course, people say, well, technology has changed. And, eh, not really. You know, being an you know, you know. You know, it's not it's not really clear. I mean, I think I think if schools just open up truck driving as an option, you know, you know, hey, look, 
if you're, you know, you, I know everyone wants, wants to go to college, but, you know, hey, here's a floor for you. You can just be a truck driver. It's not a glamorous job, but it's not terrible either. You can make thirty to $40,000 a year. It's a nice job. Again, this might be a limited bit of automation, but nonetheless, here's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sort of pragmatic solution. But I gave you some ramblings. Any further comments, Swithin? Um, all I would say is with the, the quote-unquote free-spirited option, um, it might well be the case that when people do things, they might actually end up like doing being a bin man or it could just be the case that they can figure out things that they can do which they don't have to spend that long on to earn enough money that they want to so they can do other things um you are right about certain things that require formal qualifications but as i said at least in england uh, you don't require there aren't that many that say you must have legally a um a degree as I say, medicine and engineering are the, the ones that uh, immediately come to mind. I, I'm not aware of many others. Um, so I do think it's uh, you can avoid that. And also, you could home educate until, they're say, 18. I don't know in the US. Um, so, for example, um, it was David Friedman's children were home educated, uh, but they did the SAT so that they could then go to university. Uh, and that's another option. I mean, you only play the system as long as you need to play the system for. Um, so if you have, I think the main thing is parents need to have a plan and they don't. This is another thing of marriage. Uh, marriage really should be treated like an investment. Uh, and it isn't. It's treated like a consumer good. And because of that, uh, things like children aren't really thought about and planning for things for education and the stuff is not anything that really comes to mind and consequently it's generally done quite poorly uh, but as i say that's a, an entire episode in its own right um just like to thank everyone for listening if you have enjoyed this please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to us on youtube uh pop bean and on spotify and if you've got any comments for the show uh, or uh, topics you'd like us to cover or things we should improve on or things you like uh, please contact us at mindcrimelibertyshow at gmail.com. That's mindcrimelibertyshow at gmail.com.